Hello and welcome to this new video in the Theory of Computation lecture series and today we will continue with Mealy and more machines. In particular we will see how we can transform one into the other and we will also see how to transform electrical transducers into Mealy machines. And we will see a lot of examples throughout this video. And if you are new to our channel, please subscribe. Our channel is called Vision Tech Academy. Like our videos and click the bell button to receive our newly released videos right away. So the big question here, we saw what a Mealy machine does. We saw what a Moore machine does. Both of them, they are finite automata with output. The big question is the notion of equivalence. Are they equivalent? Aren't they? So our definition of equivalence of two machines so far has been based on whether they accept or not the same language. So if we consider this particular criteria, we cannot consider a Mealy machine and a Moore machine. Eventually, as you may all recall, that a Moore machine always prints one extra character uh, compared to the input so the uh, output is always one character longer than the input however Mealy machine prints exactly the same number uh, the the length of the output is equal to the length of the input however we may say that the output automata are equivalent if they always give the same output when presented with the same input stream so Two milli machine, uh, two milli machines can be equivalent or okay, equivalent, or two more machine can be equivalent. But a milli machine can never be equivalent to a more machine, as I said, because of the length of the output issue. So the main problem here, therefore, with our new definition of equivalence, is that more machine always begins with one automatic start symbol. And to get around this difficulty, we shall define that a Mealy machine is equivalent to a Moore machine whenever they always result in the same output if the automatic start symbol for the Moore machine is deleted from the front of the output. So let's uh, start with this definition. Given a Mealy machine ME and a Moore machine MO, which prints the automatic start character, we say that these two machines are equivalent if for every input string, the output string from MO is exactly X concatenated with the output, excuse me, from ME. So rather than debating of the merits of the two machine, we shall prove that for every Moore machine, there is an equivalent Mealy machine, and for every Mealy machine, there is an equivalent Moore machine. So I guess you see where this is going. So we shall take one way of the transformation, Moore to Mealy, and we shall do that through constructive proof. Likewise, we shall do the other way of the conversion, Mealy machine to Moore machine. So we will see how does that work. We shall describe the algorithm along with uh, an example. So let's start with the first uh, transformation, Moore to Mealy. And the theorem is, states that if MO is a Moore machine, then there is a Mealy machine, ME, that is equivalent to it. And for the proof, we will consider eventually a proof by a constructive algorithm. So we will start by considering that any particular state Q in MO, and let's assume that it prints a character T, all edges eventually entering the state Q are labeled with an input letter that is represented inside the state. So if we want to transform this particular state and its incoming transition, we can erase the state, the uh, output from the circle, inside the circle, and rather we distribute it along the incoming edges. So we shall leave the outgoing edges from Q alone, as they will be relabeled based on the state they go to. And if we repeat this procedure to all state, and in each state we consider the incoming edges, we can turn this into a Mealy machine relatively easily. And the symbol that used to be printed automatically when the machine starts in uh, the start state Q0 
is no longer in existence, but that does not stop the rest of the output string from being the same. Therefore, if we don't consider the start symbol, the Moore machine is equivalent to the Milli machine. And actually, this transformation Moore to, Moore to Milli is e uh, easier. We shall see that the Milli to Moore is a little bit more complicated. So let's look at this example. Again, we shall apply what the algorithm we learned. We shall take each state and then we shall consider all the incoming uh, transition to it and we take the output from inside the circle and we distribute it right so what we shall get is this so notice we take for instance the state q1 so q1 has two only one out incoming transition which is from q0 with a so we take the one the output one from inside the circle we put it uh, slash a uh, Q2 has only uh, actually two, one incoming transition from Q0 labeled with B and one loop from Q2 to itself labeled with A. So we take the zero output, we put it slash on each slash zero in each of these two edges. Uh, oh yeah, actually we have another incoming uh, transition from Q1 with B, so therefore the same. That zero will be labeled along that edge. And similarly, for Q3, it has actually uh, one, two, three main transition. One from Q1 with one, so we distribute it along the edge. Uh, one, another transition from Q2 with zero, so we take the zero from Q, uh, we take actually the one, I'm sorry, from Q3, and we put it along the edge from Q2 to Q3, and we have one loop labeled with both A and B, so we take the one from uh, the circle of Q3 and we label it slash A1 slash 1 and uh, B slash 1. So that's the machine. Notice that the machine, the transitions are exactly the same. What will change here in this transformation is just we took the output from inside the circle, we distributed along the edges. Very simple. So now let's look at the other transformation, meaning Mealy machine to Moore machine. For every Mealy machine ME, there is a Moore machine MO that is equivalent to it. And again, we will do this through a constructive algorithm that will inform us how we shall do this transformation. So actually, we cannot just do the reverse procedure, which is taking the uh, output along the edges and just put it inside the circle. And why is that? Because if we do so, we can end up in a deadlock situation because the edges, they could have one incoming edge could have uh, the output zero and another incoming edge to the same state has the output one. What shall you do? Shall you put the zero, the one? Eventually, you cannot put both of them. A good example is the following. So the state Q4 has two incoming uh, edges, one with a slash zero, another b slash zero, so those are fine because they are the same. The other one that causes problem is the other incoming edge with b slash one. So here, two edges are incoming edges with uh, output zero, the other, another one with output one, so that causes a problem. Therefore, we should think of another solution. And the uh, short solution actually is that we will split the state Q into two states. We will call them Q4 1 as a superscript and Q4 2. So basically, one, the Q4 1 will have the output 0, the Q4 2 will have the output 1. What we will do, all the edges that have the output 0 will go to Q4 1, all the edges that have the output 1 will go to the Q4 2. So in this, after splitting the, uh, the, the that state Q4 into two states, then we can do kind of the reverse operation. And we will leave again the outgoing edges at the end, but we don't touch them because we always consider on the incoming edges. If we, if we focus each state, the incoming edges, and we split state whenever necessary, we should converge to uh, solution. So, if all edges 
uh, coming into a state have the same printing instruction, then yeah, by all means, then that shouldn't be even a problem. In that case, we do not need to split the state into two states. So, if the other consideration is that if there are multiple incoming edges with different output for each edge, we should create a copy of the state for each group of edges that have the same output in the form of something slash t. This is the generic uh, instruction, kind of, verbatim of the algorithm. And then if we do that, <coughs> the algorithm will slowly converge from a Mealy machine to a Moore machine. One interesting property of the edge that was a loop in ME is that it becomes two edges in MO, one that is a loop and another edge that is not a loop. How so? Let's uh, discuss this through an example. So notice uh, the portion of the uh, automata on the left hand side. So here we have Q3 and then it has uh, one incoming edge with the input A and the output 0, the other one which is a loop in Q3 with the input B and the output 1. Eventually we need to split these two, the Q3 into two states. But the thing is, is that Q3 has itself a loop. So that loop, eventually after we split Q3 into two, the loop becomes one edge that is regular and another edge that is a loop. So we split Q3 into Q3 1 and Q3 2 and uh, as you see we have one edge from Q3 1 into Q Q3 2 with B and then into Q3 2 we have the loop with B. But as far as the other edge from Q3 into Q6 that will be the same from Q3 1 into Q6 and Q3 2 into Q6 but there shouldn't be a problem there. So, in a nutshell, if there is ever a state that has no incoming edges, we can add any printing instructions to it, even if it is the start state. So, while repeating this process of copying states whenever necessary, we can choose one of them to be the start state. Also, having to choose which state in ME to become the start state in MO makes the conversion not unique, and that is okay. Actually, this was expected as ME is equivalent to MO without the uh, initial start symbol being printed. So we start up the machine MO initially, we print some unpredictable character specified by the start state, and this does not correspond to any output from ME as it never prints before reading any input character, and that's the big difference actually between the two machines. So let's, uh, as we did for the example with the uh, Moore machine, let's uh, do the same exercise, but starting with the Mealy machine, let's convert it to a Moore machine. And as I said, it is a little bit more complicated, mainly because the fact that sometimes we have to split states and we have to take extra considerations. So let's see how we can do this. This is the initial uh, Mealy machine that we start with. So eventually we can start with whatever uh, state that we want. For instance, we can start with the state Q0 as it has um, two incoming edges, one with A and uh, outputting zero, another one with B outputting one. So already we have two output character, therefore we would need to split Q0. When we split Q0, uh, we will have one state Q01, another Q02. So the Q01 will get the input along the edge that was A slash 1, A slash 0. So we take the A slash 0 and we put the 0 inside the Q01. Likewise, we'll do the same thing for the Q02. We take the 1 that was the output for the edge labeled with B and we move it inside the circle. But eventually the outgoing edges they should be the same so whenever uh, each outgoing edge that was from q0 to another state we should have two edges one from q01 and the same edge from q02 so then we continue 
what is the next state that we want eventually we can actually do we can the order of the states is not specified by the algorithm therefore you can actually choose any order of states provided that you apply the algorithm correctly so let's choose q1 q1 is uh, is not a big problem actually because it has two incoming edges both having the output one therefore it's simple uh, we just get the one from each uh, both edges and we put it inside the circle uh, which next let's uh, pick the state q3 for instance so q3 uh, actually q3 it doesn't pose any problem because it has to one edge coming from q01 with b slash zero another from q02 equally with b slash zero so therefore we can take the zero from each edge and we move it inside the circle and i'm coloring here the transition that we made with blue so that you can see the evolution of the uh, execution of the algorithm the last state is q2 so q2 eventually is a little bit more complicated because one it has to on one hand side on uh, one hand side it has two category of output two edges having the output one two other edges having the output zero so for a start we have to split the q2 into two states but also q2 has a loop so we have to uh, take that into consideration so the uh, what we do eventually we split it into q2 1 and q2 2 q2 1 will have the output 0 so both edges from q3 to q2 and q2 into itself will uh, we take the output from there we put it inside the q2 1 and likewise we do the same thing for q2 2 we take the one from the edges and we put it inside the circle also the only thing we need to add is that since q2 ha was had a loop inside uh, had a loop to itself therefore we have to add from q2 2 to q2 1 we have to add another edge with the with b so that's the only main difference that we have to add so with this we finish the uh, transformation from melee to more so as you see it's a little bit more complicated due to the fact that we have to split states we have to take into consideration loops etc so the last part eventually uh, in this uh, video is the uh, we will see how we can transform uh, sequential circuits trans transducers uh, we can how we can represent them by milli machines and actually machines in computer logic and architecture courses are usually used to describe actions of sequential circuits that involve flip-flops uh, of bits and other feedback from uh, other electronic devices. So the output of uh, these circuits is not only a function of the specific instantaneous input, but also it is a function of the previous state of the system because of the feedback loops. So the total amount of history of the input that can be kind of remembered in a finite automata is bounded by the function of the number of states the automaton has. So the automata with input and output are sometimes called transducers. Why? Because of their connection to electronics. So let's look at this particular transducer and uh, let's uh, at this particular uh, sequential circuit rather and let's try to build a transducer which is a milli machine which is in other words a finite automata with output so this is the input from the input it goes to the NAND gate and from and then we have another branch from the input that goes into the output from the NAND it goes from NAN to delay gate and another uh, fork into the OR gate. The OR gate goes back into the NAN, so you see there is a feedback loop. And from the delay, it goes one branch goes to the OR, another branch goes back uh, the OR of the input, the other one the OR that is connected to the NAN. So let's see how we can uh, do this. 
So if you notice from the previous circuit, we have two main branching points, A and B. And throughout the circuit, it's binary, cir binary circuit, right? So bits are flowing, zeros and ones. So two points and each have, uh, can have two values. So therefore we have four combination. Uh, A is zero, B is zero. A is zero, B is one. A is one, B is zero. A is 1 and B is 1, so those are four combinations. We can identify them as states, Q0 to Q3. The other thing that we may notice is the flow of bits. So the operation of this circuit uh, is they are operating on 0 and 1, so the state changes according to the following rules. So the new B equals to old A as uh, the B is basically a replication of uh, whatever is in A with the delay. The new A is the input NAND, whatever comes from the old A or old B. Old A and old B means after the bit flows from the A and comes back into the A itself. So therefore it makes it as an old version of the A, an old value of the A, and then the whatever bit from the A, from the branching point A will go after, it can change. So we have whatever comes from the input, which we do NAND. NAND, by the way, is not AND, so we do the binary AND, and then we take the inverse. NAND, whatever comes from that whole block, old A or old B. The output is basically the input or the old B, which is whatever value comes from the B. So having the states and having these rules, we can kind of think how we can uh, evaluate eventually from if we are in one particular state Q0, if we take the input, whether it's uh, zero or one, we can know what can we go, which state we can go to by the first two rules, by measuring the new A and the new value of B. So we may have another combination or the same. And then by computing the equation, last equation, which uh, instructs us how to compute the output, we know eventually that transition that takes us from one state to another state or one state to itself, we will know what we can append it with what output. So for instance, if we are at Q0 and the input is 0, we compute new A is equal to old B, which is 0. And notice that A is 0 and B is 0 in this case. The new A is the input, which is in this case 0, NAND old A, which is 0, or old B, which is also 0. So we, bottom line is 0, NAND 0, which is 1, because 0 and 0 is 0, we take the opposite is 1. The output is eventually 0 or 0, which is 0. So now, what does this mean? We are at Q0, and we computed uh, the new A and new B. New A is 1, new B is 0. That means we are faced with a new combination. We know what combination this is, because this is Q2. And what is the output? We know the output is zero. So therefore, from this uh, particular, for this particular uh, input and from Q0, we know where would we go. Remember, we are building a finite automata with output. So from each state, we have to have as many outgoing transitions as there are letters in the alphabet. Letters in the alphabet are zero and one. So each time we have to consider from each state we have to consider the input 0, we have to consider the input 1, we replace the input old A and old B by their corresponding values, and it's quite simple. The rest is basically doing uh, binary uh, math. Same thing with input 1, we compute new A, new B, and the output. We notice that new A is 1, new B is 0, that means this is the state Q2, and the output here is 1. We repeat the same process for Q1, same thing. We compute when the input is 0, when the input is 1. Q1 eventually means the new uh, old A is 0, old B is 1. Uh, we compute the same thing. We notice that new A is 1, new B is 0. Therefore, we uh, go to Q2 from Q1 and we output 1. Uh, if we read 
1 from q1 we go to the state q0 because new a and new b both of them are equal to 0 while the output is 1 so so we repeat the same process with the state q2 we know the old value of a and old value of b for the state q2 we compute those equations when the input is 0 and when the input is 1 same thing for q2 when the input is 0 new a is 1 new b is 1 that means this is the state q3 the output is 0 same thing for q2 and we repeat the same thing for q3 so what is the outcome of this the outcome is basically the mealy machine this is the table view representation remember we can always represent this using the graphical representation okay so which is both are exactly the same we take the old states when we read input 0 which state do we go to what output do we print same thing for the input 1 so this is basically the outcome of, of this transformation and we took an electric uh, electronic circuit as input we transformed it to a mealy machine and we showed all the intermediary steps so the, we can represent it using this uh, table view or using the uh, graphical representation they are exactly the same so to end this video i would like to make a comparison table for the automata that we have seen so far we have seen the FA, which is basically the DFA, the deterministic finite automata. We saw the transition graph, eventually the NFA and the NFA with the uh, empty string, more and mealy. So we, we, we will compare them uh, with, uh, with regard to five criteria, the start state, final state, number of edges from each state, whether they are deterministic or not, and the output. For the DFA, it has one start state only, some, maybe no final state at all. The number of edges from each state are equal to the number of letters from the uh, alphabet. It is deterministic and it doesn't print output. With the transition graph, the start state may have one or more. The final state, some, maybe none. The number of edges from each state are equal to words from uh, sigma star. It is not deterministic and um, eventually it doesn't provide any output. The NFA is a little bit similar to the transition graph except uh, it has only one start state and um, the, let the number of edges are equal to letters from sigma. The difference with the NFA with uh, empty string is that we add for the number of edges, it could be letters from sigma and the empty string. More and mealy, eventually they provide an output, they are deterministic, uh, they have only one start state, they don't have final state as we said, and the number of edges from each state are equal to the uh, one for each letter in the alphabet sigma so with this i reached the end of this video please stay tuned as we will tackle a more interesting subject in the in future videos in particular we will dive into clean's theorem and all the transformation algorithms from regular express between regular expression finite automata and transition graphs which are of utmost importance so please stay tuned and if you are new to our channel please subscribe i'll uh, talk to you in a couple of days when i upload the new video